Hello, this is a quick video going over ways to take audio which you've recorded and then to cut that up to use in various different VST instruments, uh, specifically drum machines, which like have MPC setups, you know, just sort of like four by four grids, um, and how we can actually use our samples, um, which we've recorded into those sort of VSTs. I've personally had a few issues with it in the past, and so I just wanted to do a quick video explaining how I have been uh, going about it recently. So just to kick off with, uh, we're just gonna record some audio. So we're just gonna go here. I'm just gonna set up for my piano, which is just over here on my right. And very quickly, we're just gonna record some audio. Sweet, so we've got some notes and Dilla would be proud of us because we're now gonna split these up and we're going to actually uh, turn this into a drum machine. Um, there's a bunch of different ways we're gonna split up these samples. My personal preference is to use the MK Slicer um, plugin, which is a script, which is amazing. Just gonna remove that, and we're just gonna keep those five samples there. And then we can just go slice. And look, we have got all of our uh, samples ready to go at zero crossing points, I believe. Um, and you know we can even just immediately create a sampler from that actually so immediately we just have exactly what i'm talking about so the quickest thing ever which is just showing that we've loaded up five different instances of sample matic and those have got those different subsections so if we just wanted something very quickly then we just have it so apologies i will just show if we go is there a good way of doing this i think if we go like You know, right, and we can just record our own sort of versions using those five notes or using those five samples. So that's by far the easiest way to just like quickly use MK Slicer using MIDI creates this like huge version. Uh, it, it, it creates a container which within that container has five separate instances of re, uh, of resample Matic 5000. You know, great, works super quickly, um, but we might want to use different plugins. So I'm kind of more focusing on that. Just wanted to quickly show that that was immediately possible. So we're just gonna go back a couple of steps. Uh, in fact, yeah, we'll just stick here. So this is where we've just got our five different um, items. So right now we only have uh, one audio file and that is just showing those five things. Um, we can see this because one of the, uh, we can see the fact that there's only one audio file. There's a chance there's gonna be two and I'm gonna really note if there are two. There's only one, fab. So this is the recording that we made. And then these are the items associated with it. Uh, so if I, you know, I show that these are the items I'm selecting, but these are all part of this file, this one long file. Uh, you know, we could click and drag that in to show you the original, et cetera, et cetera. Now, some native drum machines, namely Citala, work with well, some drum machines, native or otherwise, work just fine with clicking and dragging in media items, which is fine uh, and really, really great. But others like battery or groove agent or contact, etc., don't like that. And we actually have to click and drag from source media. And this is what caught me out quite a bit. So that's what I wanted to kind of make the video about, just to kind of show me more than anything. Um, so just to show what I'm talking about, I'm going to load up an instance of Satala. Satala is a great simple drum machine. We'll just clear this up. And then what we can do from here. We might want to click and drag, but we can't do that because of Reaper, because of two windows. But what we can do instead is click and then hold down Control and Alt. And then we see we've got the blue outline. That means we can click and drag those samples. <laughs> We've got that C like we're expecting to hear. And then we can click and drag this. And we can click and drag this. You see, we can't do multiple samples, annoyingly. Uh, but that's just the kind of nature of it. You know, um, Satala is a brilliant, like... I want to say just sort of basic drum machine, and I don't mean that in an offensive way, a basic sampler, not set up for multiple sampler input. If I'm wrong, tell me, that would be awesome. I'd love to be wrong on that. And then, you know, we can go all those kind of things. And, you know, it's some, you know, we can do stuff like uh, set it to be reversed and then go like, um, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's great. That's really, really lovely. But, I wanted to show the case where we don't want to use Satala, I mean, we want to use something else. We're going to use Groove Agent SE. Uh, we're going to use Groove Agent. Apologies, I just misclicked. Let's reload that. Uh, SE is exactly the same as Groove Agent, though. It's just a case of the fact that Groove Agent SE is free. And so that's what we're going to show because we don't want to be exclusive with our stuff. So I like using Groove Agent. It's got the kind of MPC 12, uh, 16, 4x4 pad kind of stuff. But one of the things that really annoyed me when I started off 
Um, and I mean, by that, I mean up until like the past 24 hours, is the fact that I can't click and drag these samples, even if I'm using this sort of like control alt sort of system. Um, it just doesn't, Groove Agent is not happy with items in this kind of way that Satala was. I can't just click and drag. So what we actually have to do, and it's a little bit obscure, which is again why I wanted to make this video. I'm going to continue to use this project media, and this is going to show me the me the source media, and that shows everything that's recorded within this project. So as a quick thing, I could literally just click and drag this, and that gets me that sample. So if we just kind of zoom out, then we can set the sample length. That's just because I've triggered it a whole bunch of times. You know, and we could do that kind of stuff. We could click and drag this to over here as well and make copies, he says, entirely failing to use hotkeys correctly. You know, and then we could set this to be uh, the second sample and we have the like, different sample starts and stuff like that. And we have the sample ends, you know, and that's if we've got just like the long sample. Thank you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't want to do that because that's tedious. So what we actually need to do is we need to convert these media items, these individual items, like shown here, into source media, which basically means a media item is a representation of the file, like it's showing the beginning and the end, but the source media is actually a file, like, and that's what we need to do. We need to create, in this case, five small sample, uh, small files for us to use. And again, there's a whole bunch of different actions we can do for this. The quickest way is to actually glue these items. Um, gluing is typically, well, gluing is where you cr you select like a bunch of samples and then you create a new file out of them. It's it's when you've got like lots of collections. Uh, and you see here, we've got like hyphen, we've got the suffix of glued, which is great. Um, but what we actually want to do uh, rather than anything is we can actually use this, the gluing on individual items. So you see how I've got glued one, et cetera, like that. So I'll just undo that. So what we're actually going to do is glue each of these items individually or separately. And if we look at glue, we've got a couple of different options. My particular personal favorite is x -Rayum's, uh glue selected items independently. And we can just run that. And then that creates those, it, it converts these away from being part of the master file. And instead, if we take a look at length, uh, instead of being like a six second file, there are now six or five one second files. So give or take a bit of um, pre-roll because it records the extra bar beforehand. Um, and that allows us to actually use those uh, small files in Groove Agent. Now, we still can't actually reset uh, removal samples. No, my apologies. Uh, we're just going to reset this agent or remove kit. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, reset agent. And then load kit. I think this will just work if we just put things in. Okay, we're going to find out. Um, we still can't actually click and drag from the main window, which kind of upset me. Like, I was really, really wanting to do that. Um, but what we can instead do is if we use this, um, so just to kind of show again the project media, we can just click and drag these into this list. And I thought we could do multiple. Yes, we can. So there we go. So that's what we're looking for before. Apologies. Let's just um, clear that up because that was a real mess. Uh, two seconds. So let's uh, reset the agent. Uh, let's get rid of kits if we can do. There's definitely a way we do this. I can't recall. So basically, we've got these samples. We can see that we've actually, you know, it's it. We can set this if you right click and go to um, mirror selection in Bayon project. Whenever we select these samples, they're showing up down here. And then we can just click and drag. And then you see how this one here. I believe this is round robin. I can't actually remember what this does. I think it's just replaced, but I could be wrong. And this actually stacks them up. So one, two, three, four, five. And that's how we've taken our recorded audio and then actually converted that into a, a MIDI controllable uh, thing that we can actually use. So for example, um, apologies. If we look here, then in the MIDI editor, one of the nice things, of, and Satala does this as well, but we can actually see the, um, the names. <laughs> 
etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think there's a bunch of different ways we can view this so that we can you know have different different clarity over what those files are and then you know and the point being that within like samplers like this we've just got considerably more like control over say pitch pitch envelopes filters sample you know there's so much we can do within more sophisticated samplers like groove agent or contact for example but my key con problem was i didn't know a good way of going from the original long file to slice into a way that we could use that um and now i can and that's really really lovely so in conclusion we recorded some audio we sliced it up using MK Slicer, so that created different items. We then went through and we glued them all together using something like uh, glue selected items independently. Shoutouts to Breeder SPK 77's glue tools. I love this so much. It gives us loads of different ways that we can glue things. So, for example, you could have the process item separately and then just glue. That then creates those files. And then we can use the source media to click and drag those into our sample of choice. And that gives me the kind of behavior I was looking for, and maybe that gives you the behavior you're looking for as well. I hope this has been of some kind of value, and if it is not, let me know, but if it has been useful, also let me know, and if you'd like me to go any over anything else that I just showed, please also let me know. Have yourself a great day. Thanks so much for your time.